new AP. She got it, you. I got you, Juicy Entertainment News for Monday. You know, everyone is jumping on the NFT train. We talked about it, like, multiple times last week. Non-fungible tokens, digital art that's bought and sold with cryptocurrency. Eminem released his own collection. Quincy Jones released a Whitney Houston collection. Jay-Z sold his Reasonable Doubt artwork as NFTs back in July. And now, Death Row Records, Death Row Records, rather, announced another collection of NFTs to celebrate celebrate the 28th anniversary of Snoop's Doggy Style. Can you believe it's been 28 years? I played that CD so much that I put grooves in that album. Um, Death Row collaborated with Crypto.com, which just recently purchased the naming rights to the LA Staples, uh, the Los Angeles Staples Center. Remember I talked about that last week as well? Well, Crypto.com and Death Row Records have collaborated for a new NFT collection to celebrate not only Doggy Style, but also the anniversary of the label's 30th anniversary, rather. Um, and the seven-token collection will contain music from Doggy Style, including the Gin and Juice instrumental, and will be available tomorrow on Crypto.com slash NFT. Plus, it's going to be accompanied by a double vinyl reissue of the 1993 record. Can I can't believe 28 years already. Dr. Dre and his ex-wife, Nicole Young, are still battling it out in court. Um, they've yet to come to a financial agreement that will make both parties happy. And of course, as these proceedings have been dragging on, Dr. Dre's assets have reportedly been expo exposed in some new court documents. Dr. Dre has accumulated $180 million in cash, $260 million in property, and $6 million in stock over the years. They also, uh, the documents also reveal that he sold off a portion of his Apple stock during his divorce for over $73 million, and that he reportedly made $4 million in 2020 alone. Now, his ex-wife, Nicole, is asking him to cough up $4 million to cover her legal fees from the divorce proceedings and claims that he still owes her $1.2 million from a previous court order. Now, even though they were granted the divorce earlier this year, they're still fighting over the prenuptial agreement, which put, was put in place over 20 years ago when they first got married. Now, Nicole believes it should be rendered null and void after Dr. Dre supposedly tore it up as a romantic gesture. He completely does not agree. All right? Now, obviously not. Now, he is currently paying Nicole almost $300,000 a month in temporary spousal support, which works out to about $3.5 million per year. Now, the only way out for Dr. Dre is if Nicole remarries or enters into a new domestic partnership. Now, you know, she's never going to let that happen until she gets that cash. Um, or if uh, there is death of either party. Documentary that came out on Friday has put some light again on the infamous Super Bowl Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction. And, uh, yes, it's back in the spotlight, and it's made some revelations with a whole lot of finger-pointing. Now, the Hulu documentary called Malfunction, The Dressing Down of Janet Jackson, discussed what happened before, during, and especially after uh, Janet Jackson was exposed on live TV during the halftime show, alluding to a secret conversation that was had between Justin Timberlake and Janet stylist in her dressing room just before the show. Also, it alleged that Janet Jackson and her stylist are the ones who came up with the costume stunt. But it was supposed to reveal a red bustier, not her bare flesh and breast. Now, apparently, she didn't run the idea by CBS or any of the event producers, and Justin only learned about it the day of the performance. Now, no one rehearsed the big moment, which in hindsight, all of them regret. Justin has still been apologizing for the incident years later. Um, he actually just finished a apologizing for, for it earlier this year. Now, the documentary also focuses on the then top dog at CBS, Les Monvez, who, or Moonvez, rather, who demanded a face-to-face -face apology from both Justin and Janet. Now, Justin obliged, apologized. Janet did not. She refused to apologize, and because uh, Moonvez was deeply embarrassed and furious over what had happened on stage, the documentary sort of says that he ha was the one who had something to do with the downfall of her career and even though she was banned from the Grammys Justin was still allowed to go on and perform and he also won best male pop vocal so the documentary also helped shed some light on the music industry's pitfalls and how men are kind of favored
like they are in most things in the world. And that's your Juicy Entertainment News for Monday. Lock it in again tomorrow for more of the juice right here on the all-new KISS 96.